Over the past month, I did a series of polls about what are the favorites of each role are, with four to 5,000 votes being cast for every poll. So I thought we could go over the data to see how the roles are performing to people, because it's a very easy thing to do, I need a break, and this is my channel, I will do what I want. This also seemed like a good opportunity to go into how I feel about all the different jobs on some amount of level. I won't be going into deep detail for all jobs, but I will be going into a bit of detail. Enough to make you satisfied in getting a general feel of how I feel. So okay, let's get right into it. Starting with the melee, we have two obvious winners and one very obvious loser. Samurai and Dragoon are very close, which is almost not surprising. One has a class, so you can start the game as it, and the other is... Samurai. Not much more needs to be said on that aspect. Ninja being so much below the two, though, seems to be, I would say, due to the difficulty of Mudra. The job has been made a lot easier with them being GCDs now, but it's still a very high APM job and a bit technical. Plus, remembering the order for Mudras to get specific ninjutsu is difficult. Not a lot of people commented on the job, except to mention the bunny, really. The bunny got mentioned a bunch, and that bunny is cute after all. What a lot of people commented on, though, was Monk. Monk got destroyed in this poll. Only 15% of the vote. I attribute this to a bunch of things. Grease Lightning turned many people away, the number of positionals turned others away, and generally it's boring to play, so that turned another group away. Even with the update to make it a lot smoother to play and not worrying about Grease Lightning, people seem to still not care about the job. But all the people who like Monk are really about Monk. People saying things like, you're sleeping on Monk. Did people not give the rework a chance? I don't think that's it. The rework didn't do much anyway, so I think it's just in some limbo. Even before the rework, the job felt unfocused to me. Grease Lightning isn't even a worry if you have uptime. Chakra is this weird bit of RNG that you need five procs for to even get one use of it. And then the Shadowbringer's abilities? Anatman was a good idea for keeping Grease Lightning through ultimates where applicable. Six-Sided Star is a short downtime button that experts either don't use or use rarely, and the more casual player probably doesn't know how to use it right. And Tornado Kick. I mean, Tornado Kick, that's all I have to say. All in all though, this spread actually nearly perfectly represents my feelings on the melee. Dragoon is my favorite, obviously. I have an unending allegiance to it that only a melee that shares gear with it can beat. Hint hint Endwalker. Second up is Samurai, pretty closely. The job plays so smooth and expertly, even in lower levels. Though when you have level 80 muscle memory, it's hard to go back. Then in a bit of a distant third is Ninja. Though I am still a bit salty that a really... Really bad run as a ninja in Heaven's Word was a better parse in Alexander than anything my Dragoon did. I can't tell if I was just really good at Heaven's Word Ninja despite not playing it much, or what. Then in super far dead last is Monk. I do not like Monk. The way I leveled Monk for Shadowbringers was fate grinding. I needed to do it for gemstones anyway, but I hated Monk that much that I didn't even do dungeons with it. Yet here we are. I really hope Endwalker does a glow up like they did for Machinist. Speaking of Mushy Mist, we have the range jobs. A very, very close race between Dancer and Muckkiss, with Bard lagging a bit behind. I'm not really surprised by this one either. Dancer is new, fancy, and super easy to play generally. To the point that, if anything, I'm surprised it didn't run away with the poll. Looking at the comments, Dancer being simple is both a positive and a negative thing. Metavist is almost entirely positive comments. And Bard had the most varied responses from good to bad. I can't really pick a single point of why Bard is so much lower. 
I'd have to guess using my reasoning for why I would not like Bard. Dancer is new and a breath of fresh air. And for the third time, Moon and Kohepst is a new job. And this time there's so much Edgar flavor. Drill, Bioblaster, Autocrossbow, more. Final Fantasy VI is so represented here. And Final Fantasy VI is one of the best games, so it makes a lot of sense. Honestly, until Shadowbringers, I way preferred Bard over it. But then this newest rework made it super good. I still don't like how annoying hyperchargers with ping, but that's mitigatable in the end. But even still, it's the busiest range to play, so I figured difficulty would push back people to Bard. But I guess not. Flavor and being new again was enough to make Math Rift the favorite ranged. Then I moved into the final DPS set, Mages. This one was... kinda obvious too. Red Mage ran away with it, but I definitely expected it to run even further away with it. Black Mage and Summoner are super difficult for people to wrap their heads around. They're definitely both very, very strong and make a lot of sense when you understand them. But I recognize that Black Mage is the single highest skill job in the game. Summoner is just messy from an outsider perspective, even when it's really clean when you know what's happening. And both of these jobs being my top two most viewed videos kinda supports this. People just don't know what to make of these jobs. And then there's the winner. Red Mage is amazing in so many ways. It's got all that style, the flips and tricks, the melee combo, shiny explosions, and if the healer is dead, some very tiny healing and raising capabilities. They might be skills you never want to be using normally, but when you have to use them, they're so strong, capable of saving entire runs, you can single-handedly save any wipe. And then get zero commendations despite also being top DPS. It's also the simplest job to play before Dancer existed. Understand how dual cast works, and that's it, you win. Every job has its complexities beyond the beginning stuff, but at the basis level, Red Mage had Dancer beat on being simple two years in advance. And I just feel like the job is super smooth to play. There's a reason that when I had to use a non-Dragoon job to do Deliberum Regine Savage, I went Red Mage. Good damage, good movement, and very flexible when you need to be. It also helps that being a Cure 4 bitch is easiest on Red Mage, I'd say, but that's besides the point. The only issue I have with Red Mage is the AoE. I honestly, genuinely preferred when AoE was one button and Molin A. Scatter, 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 scatter. For Thunder 2 and for Arrow 2 just don't feel right to me. Maybe it's just because of it being newer, but the entire rest of the toolkit, buttery smooth. And once you get the rotation going, there's very little downtime between melee phases due to just how much mana you get from your finisher. The comments show a lot of support for Black Mage and Summoner though. The people who enjoy the jobs are at least vocal, though I am surprised that Black Mage is ahead due to the movement issues but equally not surprised Summoner is lower due to the mysticism around the playstyle. Also, people just don't like Eggies, or Edgies, or however you pronounce it. But you have a carbuncle, guys! A carbuncle! Next, I asked about tanks. This one was a huge surprise. One of the biggest criticisms I see of Paladin and Dark Knight are that it tries to be Warrior when Warrior did it first. Both jobs have a 10 second long budget in a release window while Warrior has the name brand version. Meanwhile, Gunbreaker is doing its own thing. And yet, Warrior is in dead last. This is the only poll that has a very clear placement for every job. Dark Knight first, Gunbreaker second, Paladin in third, and far in dead last Warrior. This is especially surprising after I lived through the era of Warrior 
quote unquote supremacy in Stormblood, people could not shut up about how catered to and how good Warrior was. Even though, if you look at Ultimate, Dark Knight was better. Looking at just the comments, I get a completely different feeling. A much more even spread, with a bit leaning towards Paladin winning, Dark Knight in a close second, yet it's quite the opposite when you look at the poll results. Warrior, I just don't get why it's so low. I guess it's because it's generally the same as previous expansions? Maybe because of the cone AoE? One person said it's because of that, but nobody else did. Paladin and Dark Knight are super deep in the flavor voting. Cecil from Final Fantasy IV with both of these, people love the Edge aesthetic and the Holy Knight aesthetic in equal measure. But the lines blur when you see Paladin has the Virgin Clemency and Dark Knight has the Chad Blackest Knight. Okay, it's not that bad. Clemency follows similarly to Red Mage. You never, ever, ever should want to touch Clemency. You do not want to. But if the healer is dead, Clemency basically single-handedly saves the run. The Blackest Knight, meanwhile, has no downsides when used properly. It gives you a shield, one that is super beefy, can be put on that one guy who got four Voln stacks to try and save them, and then it gives you a full refund. It just doesn't have the same staying power Clemency does. It's far more limited in turning the tide, but you don't have to want to use it until said tides need to turn. But even still, I'm surprised Dark Knight is so far ahead. Dark Knight was always my take of choice when I wanted to be a tryhard. Paladin was when I wanted to be asleep for the run. But now they're pretty close in difficulty to play. Dark Knight's inner release is also kind of boring. I don't know. Close to the end of the expansion, I realize that Dark Knight is in my bottom two for tanks this time around. Paladin is the most all-around best tank. Strong defense, one of the better ultimate cooldowns for dungeon running, the ability to carry with clemency when people die two-thirds into a fight, and a much more fun version of inner release than just hit the same button five times. Plus that finisher is so flashy, way more so than the other tanks. It's also the only tank I can show off I am a triple legend with. But of course I left my favorite for last, I haven't even mentioned it. I can completely understand why Gunbreaker is in second, but I can't tell why it's so distant from first either. It's so slick and smooth to play, it's difficulty maybe what keeps it down? It's got plenty of flavor of its own, a much cooler version of a burst phase of not being in a release. When used properly, Super Belied is just as good as Hollowed Ground, while also having a shorter cooldown. It's just my absolute favorite tank to play. This comes as a DPS main though, and for as much as all jobs are DPS, Gunbreaker is the most DPS-like job that isn't a DPS. Perhaps that's what's keeping others away? But it's clear people really want to TBN their Cold Steel the Hedgehogs. Nothing personnel, kid. Then I asked everyone what limited job people prefer. Green Ranger it was the obvious pick, what else would you pick? No need to go over this one, if you didn't pick Green Ranger you are bad. Now for the finale, the healers. I'm not all that surprised here. There was a lot of love for Scala in the comments, people still appreciate the job, it's strong, it has options, and fairies are an aesthetic, but it's pretty clear why White Mage and Astrologian are way ahead. White Mage, which has a bit of a lead to be first place, is super simple to use. Holy is the best healer AoE, bar none. Stun is a crowd control that heals more than any actual heals you could cast. Benediction is a full heal on demand that pairs extremely well with Super Belied and Living Dead. And otherwise, every heal you put out is extremely powerful. Astrologian, on the other hand, is a master of flavor and control, 
you have so many buttons, which makes it harder to play, but that means you have so many options. Like, how many do you have? Essential Dignity can have the potency far above anything White Mage can do. You have Horoscope and Earthly Star, the latter of which being way stronger than a size, but not giving mana back. And then there's Yu-Gi-Oh! It's own little minigame you play mid-fight. But that's where my big issue comes in. Cards are a nuded version of what they once were. I do not like current cards. Back in Stormblood when they were a variety of buffs, I loved Astrologen. It was like Dark Knight for me. I try hard with Astrologen, used White Mage for easy mode, but now every card is the balance and I hate it. I want my Broccoli Bowl increasing defense again. You were for MP when some guy refuses to dodge AoEs and dies over and over and I have to keep raising. I never cared for Scholar all that much. It's strong, I will never deny that, but I don't enjoy it as much as the other two. At least, old Astrologen and its fun cards. For Shadowbringers, White Mage is just far too good for me to really care about Scholar. Really? No downsides for how it plays, and it seems people agree. If they disagree, it's because of the sheer options Astrologen brings. There's more reasons, of course, but that's the biggest one I saw. I hope that the coming healer rebalance with Sage gives me all my wishes for the healers, really. Make Skull and more satisfying without compromising on balance and power. Give us old cards back, and make Sage be really awesome. But that about wraps up things. Many of you already commented on the polls, but what other thoughts do we all have on jobs? They're all good and all strong, but there's always a bias in one way or another. We'll have to see what happens in Endwalker and whether all of the feelings on jobs will change, or if it'll further cement them. We can only hope we will all get what we want out of the jobs. Otherwise, I'm interested in what all everyone has to say for themselves. Take care and may the power of Anandatogs lay waste to your enemies. And as always, a special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon. And the extra, extra special thanks to Ayadeva, Amen Al Khatib, Benjamin Han, Body Clock, Ethan, Ethan Olson, Evan, Jamie Cottrell, Kyle Steinhauser, Malfi, Scott Stanley, Vala LLC, and Yvonne the Moose. If you'd like to become one of my patrons, the link is down below. You can also join me on Discord, all that good stuff. Thank you for watching.